Welcome to part one of Autumn Road Acrylic Painting. This is actually a painting I did about a year ago, last fall, and when I uploaded it to YouTube, the first part of the video got deleted and disappeared forever into a digital netherworld. And several people asked me if I could redo part one, so here we go. This is my attempt. This painting will have different dimensions than the first one, but it's enough to give you the gist. So we start with the sky with my inch and a half brush and I'm laying in a color called Sweet Pea. This is a very light lavender color and I'm not looking for a smooth sky. I want to give the illusion of a very misty, overcast, cloudy sky. So I'm just putting in the color very roughly, working it into the tooth of the canvas all the way across the top. Just like so. Now for trees that are a little closer but still lost in the mist, I'm using a color called Wisteria. This is also a lavender tint with more of a bluish hue to it. And you can see I'm just dabbing the color right on the paint, giving the loose illusion of a faint silhouette of trees in the distance. And if you look at my brush, you'll see that I've got bristles just going haywire everywhere. And you'd say it's about time for a new brush. But no, I keep these old brushes because they're great for dabbing in texture like this. There's just a multitude of trees and bushes and these old worn out brushes. Now we're gonna add even a, an even closer layer using a color called, this is a purple color. And again, just going right over top of the wisteria, dabbing in the indication of some trees and some leaves back here in the distance. Again, we're looking for a very misty effect. In part one of this tutorial, this is really just laying in the base colors. We put in the sky and the trees, but mostly just the shadow tones of the trees. And in part two, we come back and add the details and the beautiful autumn colors. And I'll go ahead and scribble in the just a rough outline of where the ground, where the foreground will begin. Now we add even closer trees and I'm using Kelly Green mixed with all the other colors I already have in my palette the purple, the wisteria, the sweet pea just mix it all together because I don't want a bright green I want kind of a grayish washed out looking green I'm going to do the same thing over here with my old worn out brush just dabbing that color right into the the painting. And be sure don't, if you're following along at home like I know some of you are, don't color over all your purple in the background. You gotta leave some of that shining through. It just gives the illusion of depth to your picture. And we'll go ahead and work this into the foreground too. Again, these are just base colors. Just very soft tones that we're going to use and come back later and add the details on top of it. Instead of using more paint, if you're running thin on your palette, just add a little water and the paint will come right off. It doesn't take much water. You don't want it real opaque. You just want it to come off the brush onto the canvas well. And just scribble it in. And again, we're not looking for smooth tones at all. We want it to look like rough underbrush. Okay, now even closer. This is Kelly Green with a little black and the purple colors still on my palette mixed in. 
and I'm just laying in the shadow tones of the woods. This doesn't look like much now. A lot of my students when I teach, they get so flustered at this point of the painting because they think hey, it just doesn't look good. My friends, my brother, my mom, they're going to come into the room and see me painting this and they're going to think I'm just the worst artist in the world. But you just have to kind of relax, be patient, and explain that this is just the base colors, the, the shadows. It will all come together later on in your painting. And it's a necessary step. You have to have shadow, you have to have light, or your painting will look very flat. And I'm just using the same brush I've used all along in this painting. I haven't cleaned it once. And right now it's loaded with all these colors. Sweet pea, wisteria, purple, kelly green. Now I'm using a color called camel to lay in the base tone of my road. This is going to be an old dirt road winding right through this autumn forest. And I don't know exactly how the road will lay at this point, but I'm just putting in the indication just so for later on we can come back and add greater details. Still haven't cleaned my brush. It's okay for some of those greens and the purples to come through on the road. Now I'm adding a little orange. This is just pure orange to start the suggestion of some autumn color underbrush. Just blend it in all through the base painting here. This is a very simple tutorial. And we're about ready for part two.